This morning, we know there's a lot of things that you could be doing, but we are honored to gather and worship with you today. Before we begin, just, uh, just a few announcements for you. We've got a packed week this week. On Tuesday in particular, Tuesday morning, uh, our Best Man Bible study is at uh, 7 o'clock. We have a guest speaker, Kevin Laddie. He's going to be great uh, if you're a dude and you like breakfast and you want to come hear a great message, come at 7 o'clock. That evening is the Green and White Banquet hosted by our UMW for all the women of our church. If you're interested in that, I think it's 7 to 9 on Tuesday night. It's going to be a great event. Hope you'll check that out. Next Sunday, the Chancel Choir is doing uh, Vivaldi's Gloria at 4 o'clock. If you are looking for a great opportunity to reflect and uh, a great opportunity really to be in worship again, next Sunday at 4 o'clock is a great opportunity. And tonight is the Come to the Manger event from 5 to 7. It's going to be a great event. And uh, I love my light. My light went out. <laughs> Jesus would be disappointed. Um, yes, Come to the Major is tonight. And uh, food trucks, there's going to be a family concert on the front end with our children's choir. There's going to be a live nativity. It's not just for kids. This is really for our church community. We hope, you'll see, we hope to see you there this afternoon. We think it's going to be a lot of fun. So, friends, as we begin worship, don't you do it. It tried to go out again. As we begin worship, I'm carefully going to move over here. Uh, This is the second Sunday in a season that we call Advent. Advent's an incredibly important time in the life of not just our church, but in the life of the church globally as as a season of preparation to celebrate Christmas meaningfully and to celebrate Christmas well. Each Sunday in the season of Advent, we light a candle, and that does two things. One, it helps us mark the passage of time. There are four Sundays in Advent that lead up to the Christmas Eve celebration, and so the lighting of each candle reminds us that we are getting closer to the celebration of Christmas, but each of those candles also carries with it a meaning and significance. And so last Sunday, we lit the candle of hope, and we remembered that with the birth of this child, Hope is born anew to us. Today we will light a second candle later on in our service. But as we begin this second Sunday in the season of Advent, would you pray with me? Oh God, we give you thanks this morning for the opportunity that we have to worship you. We're grateful, oh God, for this place, for this sanctuary, because we know, oh God, that we meet not just each other in fellowship, but in this place we meet you. So we pray that you will pour out your spirit upon us as we worship you today. We pray all this in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Won't you stand and join us as you're able? Joy to the world on a night like no other. Of God. 
he is good. He was born to conquer the grave. Light of the world, the reason for Christmas. Sing all ye people the Lord Almighty reign. Sing every creature of God come bless his name. For he is good, for he is good. He was born to conquer the grave. spoke a word you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. For I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so Sing that again before I spoke a word. For I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. For I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You've been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it. Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God your foe, still your love fought for me. You've been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You've been so, so kind. Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God There's no 
shadow, you won't light up. Mountain, you won't climb up. Coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down. Coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up. Mountain, you won't climb up. Coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down. Why you won't tear down coming after me? There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down coming after me. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God Friends, in this stormy season of life, it is good for us to have an anchor that keeps us safe in the storm. One of those anchors is the Apostles' Creed. Would you share with me as we affirm our faith? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. the surface of my anxious imagination beckons a calmness that is found in you alone it washes over every doubt every Jesus, your presence is the comfort of my soul. There's nowhere I'd rather be when you're singing over me. I just want to be Lost in your mysteries, found in your love for me. I just want to be here with you. Here in the way, I won't worry about tomorrow. 
need to focus on the things I can't control. All my attention on the wonder of this moment. Jesus, your presence is the comfort of Together. Oh God, we give you thanks. We're grateful, oh God, because you are God and we are not. God, there are days that we look at the world around us and we think it's too much, it's too hard, but we know, oh God, that nothing is too much or too difficult for you. Oh God, we, we delight in your sovereignty. God, we're grateful for those like Gabriel whom you send to share good news and who strengthen us for the journey ahead, for those who announce with your angels the coming of our Messiah, who is our hope and our peace. Oh Lord, we confess that, that there are times that fear still reigns in our hearts. There are times that unbelief threatens to pull us back into darkness, and so we pray that you would, you would forgive our unbelief and comfort our fear. Help us, O oh Lord, to look for the child that you sent to see the Son of the Most High who is with us, the one to whom you gave David's everlasting throne. Oh God, pour out your Spirit on us that, that we might share Mary's courage and her faith when you call upon us even now. In this season of Advent, oh God, we pray that you would prepare our hearts. Help us, O oh Lord, to hear the word that you would have for us today and speak deeply to us. 
We pray all this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. Friends, as we continue in worship this morning, uh, part of the gift of Christian community is that your victories are my victories, my losses are your losses. We mourn together and we celebrate together. And so I invite you to lift these families up in your own prayer life in the coming week. We want to celebrate with Don and Kathy Harrison on the birth of their granddaughter, Allie Kate Adamson, who was born to Kelly and Quinn. We also want to pray for Abigail and Michael Mitchell as they mourn the passing of Abigail's grandmother, Peggy Struthers. She was the great-grandmother of Charlotte, Millie, and Michael. And now, friends, I want to invite the Savory family to come forward as we light our next Advent candle. We're thankful for Mildred and Brian for their witness. They are lighting the candle of peace, and they have both lost their mother since I've been here, and so they have leaned into that peace so greatly over this, these past years, and we're grateful for you to come and to light this candle together. In this season of Advent, we worship and gather, preparing our hearts for the coming of Christ. Each week, we light one candle in this living wreath as a symbol of the light that God's presence brings, to, brings into the world at Christmas. Today, we light a candle to remember God's promise of peace. As the flame burns bright, we recall the words of the prophet Isaiah, who looked forward to the peace that Christ would bring into the world. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf, the lion, and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. They will not hurt or destroy on my holy mountain, for the earth will be all of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Now Mildred's going to say a few words about what peace means to her. When you think of the word peace, I think the first thing that comes into my mind is the absence of conflict. And sure, that's pretty peaceful, isn't it? especially at this time of year when we're spending so much time with family. <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice if we all got together and got along every minute of every day? Yes, that would be true peace. But peace means much more than that. Jesus brings to us a much deeper meaning of peace. At the heart of the Christian message is the belief that the life and the death of Jesus gives us peace with God and within ourselves. Jesus said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Peace is a state of tranquility, a quietness of spirit, regardless of our circumstances. That secret place we go to in our heart is where we go to be with God. And when we choose to live there and allow God to be our refuge, staying in constant fellowship with him, then we can remain peaceful, no matter the craziness that's going on around us. So we need to learn to cry out to God in our times of trouble. And when we do, we'll find that peace that truly passes all understanding. 
I know at the end of the traditional service we usually go to, we always sing the song, Let There Be Peace on Earth, and let it begin with me. And as a reminder, Jesus teaches us on the Sermon on the Mount that blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be children of God. So I ask you to turn off the noise that surrounds you. Go to your secret, quiet, happy place and allow the peace of God to wash over you and just fill you up so that your heart, your home and family, our church and our nation will all know the love and peace that only Jesus Christ can bring. Merry Christmas. Amen. Let us pray together for them and with them. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for the witness and ministry of Brian and Mildred Savory, for their love for you and for their love for each other, for the peace and comfort they have found in you in the time of loss, and for ways that they share that peace and kindness with others, for the depth that they have found in that quiet place in amidst times that aren't quiet, and you continue to bring that tranquility to them. Help us to live into that ourselves as you pour your peace upon us in this busy time. May we be like the peaceable kingdom that Brian read about, where the animals who seemingly would not get along get along. May we be able to get along with those with whom we have differences and celebrate your goodness and your grace among us. In your blessed name we pray and give thanks. Amen. Wait for it. <laughs> Have you ever been invited to an Advent gender reveal party before? I've never been invited to one. Maybe I'm too old to have gotten invited to one or just not at the right stage in life. Anybody ever been invited to a gender reveal party? They can go so wrong, I'm told. They can be quite dangerous. And so today I want to invite you to see some that didn't go quite the way they were planned. Three, Two, two one. one. Sister? All right, are you Wait, Vivian, what do you think it's going to be? What? A girl. You think you're going to have a sister? What happens if it's a brother? I cry forever. All right, look in the mirror. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Stand up. Yeah. So today we look at a gender reveal gone right, not one gone wrong. And it's up the ante on the gender reveal. It's not just revealing the gender, but the name of the child. That doesn't usually happen. The name of the child and the destiny of this child in our scripture text today. And what color candle did you light, Brian? Blue. That should be a clue. That should be a clue for our gender reveal today. It was a boy. And his name was Jesus, and he came to save all of us from ourselves and from our sin. It's also Mary's color. Blue is also the color of Mary, and it may trace back to Numbers, the 15th chapter, if you want to go and read that. But in the 15th chapter of Numbers, blue is used as a color to signify those persons who obey the commandments of God and not their own impulses. So today we turn to Luke, the first chapter, verse 26, for this gender reveal. 
In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. You get all the cast of characters there. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. Turn and say that to your neighbor. Greetings, favored one. Even to the Michigan fans up front here. Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. How'd that feel? Not too bad. But she was much perplexed by these words and pondered what sort of greeting that might be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. It's as though Mary doesn't get it the first time. It has to be told to her again. So you told your neighbor that one time, try it again. They may need to hear it more than that. For you have found favor with God. The Lord is with you. Try that again. You have found favor with God. The Lord is with you. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son. You don't have to say that to the person. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. And the throne and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I'm a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now you're out of Elizabeth in her old age. You have to wonder how old that is. You know, she may have been in her 40s or something, you know. Uh, now your relative in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Will you say that with me? For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Amen. Did you know that we have three simple rules as United Methodists? I was kind of disappointed at the early service. Nobody seemed to know we have three simple rules. Anybody know we have three simple rules? Jack Whitley, Betty Whitley, okay, a few. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, gl I'm so glad a few. We're going to have to work on these three simple rules. And they're pretty simple to learn, but they're very difficult to live out. Let's try it. The first one is do no harm. Got it? The second one is do good. And the third is stay in love with God. Or as Wesley put it, more like, Attend to the ordinances of God. Attend to the ordinances of God, which means spending time in prayer, spending time studying and searching the scriptures, listening to God's word proclaimed, fasting and receiving holy communion. If you're a fan of the movie Elf, I probably get more hands for that than I do the three simple rules. Any fans of the movie Elf out there? In the movie Elf, they have a code for the elves, and the code for the elves also has three simple rules. And I think the first one has parallels with stay in love with God, attend to the ordinances of God every day, and their three rules start with this one, treat every day like Advent, right? Treat every day like Advent. Treat every day with hope and expectation, expecting something new to happen, expecting God to do something in and through you. Treat every day like Advent, slowing down enough, slowing down enough in your life to take a deep breath of the Holy Spirit and to see what the Spirit can do in and through you. Treat every day like Advent. Luke begins this passage by sharing with us the cast of characters. You hear about Gabriel and about what God will do in the house of David and Joseph and then Mary. 
Casting is so important, isn't it? Casting can make or break a show. Casting can make or break a movie. Casting can make or break a team. It can make or break a family. It can make or break most any organization. Not having the right people in the right role. Now, how many of you ever auditioned for something and didn't get the part? How many of you auditioned and spent that excruciating time waiting for the cast list to go up or tried out for a team and waited for that list to go up or have applied to college and are waiting to hear? The waiting can be difficult. The waiting can be excruciating when you don't get the part. I've certainly had my share of times when I didn't get the part. One time in junior high, I got a part where I got to sing something familiar, something peculiar, something for everyone, a comedy tonight. And we're going to miss Stephen Sondheim, aren't we? Maybe not my rendition of it, but at least we'll miss Stephen Sondheim. It's difficult and disappointing when you don't get the part that you auditioned for. When David Birnbaum wrote Elf, he had an idea of what Buddy the Elf was going to be like, but he signed on with a studio that had a very different idea of who was going to play that lead character. Anybody remember who they had cast? Chris Farley would have been a very different movie (laughs) with an elf living in a van down by the river. I mean, it just would have been a very different movie. Uh, They wanted Gary Shandling to play the Walter Hobbs character, later played by James Corleone Kahn. Uh, The director did give him a nod in Iron Man, at least to give him something since he didn't get this role. Katie Holmes was supposed to play Jovi, the Zoe Dachanel character, and I'm so thankful that Zoe got the role because it changed the whole movie. Because of her casting, because she was cast in that role, they added so much music to the show that they never would have added before. And then they were convinced they had Wanda Sykes. You know the comedian Wanda Sykes? They were convinced they had Wanda Sykes to be the department store manager. And they were so convinced they even had a name tag made for her. And that's why Faison Love there in the department store is wearing a Wanda name tag. (laughs) But my favorite cameo in the whole thing is Peter Billingsley. Do you remember Peter Billingsley? Peter Billingsley, you know who he is, you just don't know the name. He's that little boy in A Christmas Story. You remember him? And he plays Ming the Elf, all grown up. Well, as grown up as an elf could be. You didn't notice that, did you? But there he is. Casting can be so important. This was a story written by a Jewish man who loved Christmas movies from Philadelphia. He was a relative, relative nobody in the movie industry. He got together with a producer who was even less of a somebody than he was. The guy didn't even have money to take him for coffee. And the two of them got together and started thinking about what this movie could be like. And it took them seven long years from writing to production. And you think we get impatient. You think we get impatient during this season of waiting, during this Advent season, as we are called to treat every day like Advent. Treat every day like Advent. The director was a relative no one at the time. It's a marvel that this movie ever was made. And yet they persevered and they worked hard to make sure that this show could come to fruition. A nobody is cast in the role of mother of God. This young woman whose name means bitter. Did you know that? How many of y'all out there are named Mary? Anybody out there named Mary? Raise, I see a Mary in the back. Mary Miller is mad at me this week. I told her her name meant bitter. And she said, that can't be true. She even wrote me an email saying, bitter, seriously? And I wrote back and I said, Mary, originally it meant bitter. You remember we've talked about Ruth and Naomi. We've taught the story of Ruth and Naomi. And Naomi, right, wanted them to call her 
Mara, or bitter. And that's where the term Mary, the name Mary comes from. She wanted to be called bitter because she felt like the Lord had abandoned her. And I don't know what her Mary's parents were thinking. Maybe they felt like they'd wanted a boy and gotten a girl. Maybe they were disappointed in some way. They named their daughter Bitter. And I said to Mary, I said, it was bitter before Mary, the mother of God, was born. But now it's a great name, okay, back there in the back. It's a great name. It means God-bearer. It means beloved. It also means a drop from the sea, from the mar, if you will. So those are probably better than bitter. But we all have our bitter moments at time. This relative no one has Gabriel appear to her. And I wanna think of Gabriel as smiling when he says this. Now, he has to tell her not to be afraid, so I don't know that he starts with smiles, but he says to her, greetings favored one, the Lord is with you. And being named bitter, I'm not sure that she ever knew that she was favored. Because it says she was perplexed, Mildred. It says that she pondered that in her heart, that wondered what kind of greeting that might be. Greetings favored one, the Lord is with you. Matt has been doing some work with our Next Generation Ministry. And one of the things that has come out of that is a discipleship path for our children and our youth. And I think it's just as true for our adults. And one of the things that we want to make sure is that every child and youth that comes through our program knows that they are a beloved child of God. I think every person that comes through these doors, everyone that we're in ministry with, should also know that they are a beloved child of God. Why don't you say that for yourself? I am a beloved child of God. I am a beloved child of God. Say it like you mean it. I am a beloved child of God. Now I'm gonna make you turn back to your neighbor and tell one of them, you are a beloved child of God. You are a beloved child of God. We want that to be part of our discipleship. I wonder if Mary didn't know that about herself until that moment. And that's why it was so perplexing. That's why it was so puzzling. She had to ponder that and had to think it over. She had to think over that she was favored. Because he has to say it again. He says to her again, he says, do not be afraid for you have found favor with God. I want this to get in you. I want you to believe it. I want you to believe it for yourself, Mary. This has got to become a part of you because God is going to do something in and through you you never could do by yourself. God can do the impossible and God is going to enable you to do the miraculous. And then she gives her first speaking line in this new part that she has been given. Now I have to ask you, I know some of us have been disappointed in not getting a part that we tried out for, but how many of you have gotten a part you never tried out for? Anybody? Anybody been given a role that they never asked for, that they never wanted, that they never thought they should have to play? I know it's happened to me. And my response is much like Mary's first words. Her response is, how can this be? Now, her response is a little more specific than mine. Hers is, how can this be since I'm a virgin? She's like, I've been to health class. There's some serious questions I need to have answered here. I'm not sure I understand exactly how this is going to work. But I think you and I often are confronted with unexpected news. We're confronted with something new to us. We're confronted with a struggle and we say to ourselves, how can this be? You ever been there? How can this be? I've worked so hard to get something done and I, everything that I've worked for has gotten me this close and it just wasn't enough and I think, how can this be? Or I've made a mistake and that mistake just didn't seem to be a little mistake but it started to snowball out of control and it became this big mistake that I had to pay for. Or sometimes things will spiral out of control when you just say that one little thing and you didn't mean that one little thing to be so such a problem and you stand there and you say, how can this be? Well, Gabriel tells Mary, 
And he tells her pretty specifically what God is going to do. And I don't know that I've ever noticed it before in the scripture text, but they're going to put it up here for me because this happens over and over and over again. It's not Mary, you might. Uh, It could happen. It might could happen. This is will happen. You will. You will. You will. I will. God will. So let's go back through the whole thing, if if you will. Mary, you conceive you bear a son you name him Jesus he be great he be called the son of the most high and the Lord God give to him the throne of his ancestor David you will you will you will he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there be no end he will he will you will. I'm so thankful that God is attached to this script. They couldn't get anyone to really give funding until Will Farrell was attached to the script. One of the would-be producers went and played basketball with Will's agent in order to try and get Will to be attached. And once Will was attached, things began to change. You got to think that he is the, was the best person to play this because of the innocence, that playful innocence with which he comes to the table. And I really love, I really love what happened after the filming in New York. They went out and they just did uh, impromptu shoots on the street with John Favreau directing with the single cameraman and Buddy just being himself out there on the streets of New York with New Yorkers. Can you imagine? That's where you get Buddy hopping across the crosswalk or helping people give out flyers or going up to this fellow who is an extra. No, he is not an extra. He is just a man walking on the street. He did not audition for this part. Buddy just saw him and decided this would be a great moment and he goes up and accosts him and this fella found himself in the movie Elf and he didn't audition for the part. Have you ever been given a part that you never auditioned for? And you say to yourself, I didn't plan to retire this early. I didn't plan to retire with a non-disclosure. I didn't plan to lose my job. I didn't plan for my company to restructure. I never auditioned for this. I didn't plan to get divorced. I didn't plan to work from home. I didn't plan to homeschool my kids while working from home. I didn't plan for this. I didn't audition for this. I didn't plan to be widowed. I didn't plan for him to get sick. I didn't plan for her to lose her memory. We all have those how can this be moments that we didn't plan for. But like the famous theologian Mike Tyson said when he was about to face Evander Holyfield, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. Walt Disney, who would have been 120 today, said it this way, I've had a great deal of adversity and strife in my life, but all of that has made me into the person that I am. He said, sometimes you just need a good kick in the teeth. Why is it that we wait for a punch in the mouth or a kick in the teeth to slow down? Enough for God to really speak to us. This week, we had a funeral here in the this space for Nancy Hunter. Her maiden name was Schrader, and she had a brother named David Schrader, just like I do. Nancy lost her hearing at age 40. Can you imagine? She lost her hearing at age 40, and after losing her hearing at age 40, uh, I think she must have had some of those how can this be moments. I'm told that she slept with a knitted cross, Sarah, beneath her pillow. And at night, she would wake up and sometimes because of her hearing loss, be startled. And she would grab for that knitted cross under her pillow made by our knitting and prayer ministry. And she would hold on to that for dear life. And she would repeat the script that she's known for years. Do not be afraid. The Lord is with you. Do not be afraid. The Lord is with you. For nothing is impossible with God. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Her children were going through her journals. And as her children were going through her journals, they found this in one of her journals. Written in big letters, it said, everything will be all right in the end. And then she wrote it again. Everything will be all right in the end. 
And if it isn't all right, it isn't the end. That is God's promise. That is God's promise of hope and peace to you. That is God's promise of hope and peace to Mary. And that is how somehow Mary is able with God dwelling within her to be able to see, to be able to say, let it be with me according to thy word. So in these days of Advent, as you're trying to treat every day like Advent, slow down enough so you can welcome the interruptions like this one that happens to Walter Hobbs when he's in the Empire State Building. And you remember that Buddy got into the elevator in the Empire State Building and pushed all the buttons. And so when somebody might have pushed all your buttons, you still need to be willing to welcome the interruption, an interruption like this. Dad! All right, uh, let's get it over with. I walked all day and night to find you. You look like you came from the North Pole. That's <laughs> exactly where I came from. Santa must have called you. Oh yeah, sure, he uh, just got off the cell phone with me. You did? So, go on. Go on with what? Well, I, are you gonna sing a song or something, or can I just go back to work? A song? Uh, yeah. Anything for you, Dad. Uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm here with my dad, and we never met, and he wants me to sing him a song. <laughs> and um, I was adopted, but you didn't know I was born. So I'm here now. I found you, Daddy. And guess what? I love you. I love you. I love you. And maybe that can be our oh. prayer for today. I'm here. I'm here, God. And I'm singing these songs before you. And I love you. I love you. I love you. And so maybe God can take your how can this be and transform it like he did for Mary into a let it be with me according to thy word. As we come to this, your table, O oh God, may the sweet forgiveness of this table be sweeter than maple syrup on spaghetti. As we come and offer our how can this be to the God who can transform them. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for Mary, who went before all of us and helped bring you to this world in a way that we could understand. Help us to share your good news in ways that help others to know that they're our beloved child of God, children of God. And in knowing that, may they be able to treat every day like Advent with hope and expectation for what you do in and through us. Amen. When the word of God is proclaimed, part of what happens is that we are invited to respond. We respond by the way that we live our life. We respond by the way that we continue in worship. We respond by offering to God what God has given to us. And so we want to remind you that there are multiple ways to give to the church. In a moment, the ushers will come forward uh, as another way for us to give. Next week, our financial leadership will gather to make some decisions about the financial future of our church. And so you've heard us talk for the last several weeks about um, what it means to make our estimate of giving. And if you can do that, if you haven't done that already, if you can do that by next week, that'd be a tremendous help to us. We've already had 57 new families uh, make an estimate of giving for next year. So we celebrate that. And we thank all of you who have done that. I encourage all of you to continue praying about what God is inviting you to do in and through uh, the ministry of this church. We also want to remind you that Christmas Eve is coming up. And so part of our response to the word of God is to gather as the people of God and celebrate the birth of hope and peace into our lives. So you see our Christmas Eve schedule, it is, uh, it is robust. We want to put that in front of you, not only so that you can make plans for your own family, but so that you can keep the people around you in mind. There might be somebody, there might just be somebody in your life who needs a word of hope, 
who needs a word of peace, who needs a word of joy and a word of love this Christmas season. So we want to make sure that you have those opportunities to invite them to hear that kind of message coming up on December 24th. Let's continue in worship. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to me. Take my moment and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for me. Take my voice and let me sing always only for my King. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from me. Take my silver and my gold, not a mine would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every power as you choose. sisters, we gather now to share a meal together. And before we share that meal, just a couple of words of instruction. If you did not receive a communion packet when you came in, I want to invite you to, uh, to just let one of our ushers know they have packets that are coming down uh, and would be happy to make sure that everybody has one. I also want to remind you that this is not a meal merely of remembrance. We are not simply remembering the sacrifice of Jesus. We believe that when we celebrate communion together, we believe that Jesus actually shows up. And because of that, this table doesn't belong to Dunwoody UMC. This table doesn't belong to the United Methodist Church. This table belongs to God. Anybody who can respond to the invitation that we'll offer in a few moments is welcome to participate and to receive. Friends, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. 
After the supper, Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks. He gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, drink. This is the blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's pray together. Oh God, we pray that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon this community that's gathered here. Pour out your Spirit upon these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we might be your body, redeemed by your blood. Oh God, we pray that you would make us one with each other, one with you and one in ministry to the entire world. We pray all this in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, hear this invitation. For those who confess their sin, for those who confess that Jesus is Lord, and for those who come seeking grace, this table is open to you. I invite you now to tear off the first layer of the cellophane on your communion packet and receive the body, and then tear off the second layer and receive the cup. May we pray together. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this holy meal, for the way that it allows you to become a part of us and that the words that we speak become your words and that the forgiveness and grace we offer to others become the forgiveness and grace that come through us. Help us to be open like Mary was, to be able to let you be born in us this Advent so that our lives may be transformed. Help us to slow down before something slows us down. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, I have you know that Mary was cast to be in the movie Elf. Mary Steenburgen was cast to be Walter Hobbs' wife, uh, the mother there in the story. And they asked her what it was like to be able to be in the movie Elf, and she said it was magical. It was just a magical, wonderful, innocent time. She said, I love still sitting down to watch it because Elf is like giving you back two hours of your childhood and letting you be a kid again. You remember that? When everything was possible from the God who says nothing is impossible, nothing is impossible. May you open yourself this Advent to God moving you from your, how can this be, to Mary's. Let it be with me according to your script. Amen. Will you stand and lift your voices in benediction? Oh, Holy Ghost, Hold us together, bless us and keep us, and grant us peace. Wonderful Father, come shine upon us, show us favor and teach us love. and reach out our hands to comfort those in the Holy Ghost, hold us together, bless us and keep us, and grant us peace, and wonderful Father, Come shine upon us, show us favor in Jesus' name. Amen. Go in peace.